Hi everyone. Today we're going to continue learning about plant reproduction and specifically we're going to look at something uh, called pollinators. Pollinators. So we looked at pollen last time but now we're looking at the pollinators. Um, if you if you need to get a hold of me the best way to do that is via email. You can see my email address there on the screen. Um, if you don't have your materials please pause the video very quickly. Go find your pencil, a science notebook, and your color pencils and then come back and unpause your video. All right, so all right, we only have a few lesson objectives today. It's a relatively short list. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to explain to me what a pollinator is and give examples of four groups of pollinators. In addition, you need to be able to list three reasons that pollinators visit flowers. And finally, you need to explain to me why pollinators are important to humans, sort of the why do we care. So those are our lesson objectives today. The thing that uh, the thing that we looked at last time was that we have uh, plants that use cones, which we call which we call gymnosperms. Now we said that gymnosperms produce a lot of pollen, and that pollen is very lightweight, and that that pollen makes its way around the environment by the wind. So the wind blows it everywhere; they blanket everything. So that's their strategy. Remember that pollen is uh, what allows plants that are rooted to the ground to reproduce. Flowering plants on the other hand, and by that of course I mean angiosperms, they rely on pollinators to deliver pollen. But we need to know what a pollinator is. So a pollinator is really any animal that carries pollen. Uh, the first thing I need to point out is that uh, insects are animals. So insects are animals, they are not plants and they're not microscopic life. So insects are animals, and insects are probably the biggest group of pollinators. So any animal that carries pollen, we simply say they're a pollinator. Some examples, and I'm sure you can provide some examples of your own, uh, would be bees, whether we're talking honeybees or bumblebees, uh, wasps, uh, which are similar to bees but not the same. We also have beetles, uh, butterflies and moths, uh, flies. There are many, many different species of flies that are very important pollinators. Of course, this includes groups of birds, things like hummingbirds. Uh, some of you may uh, have seen hummingbirds visiting flowers before. And also, we have some mammals. Uh, bats are actually very important pollinators as well. Uh, if, you, if you enjoy bananas, uh, bananas are often uh, produced because bats provide some pollination services for them. So a pollinator, any animal that carries pollen. So here's a question. Let's, let's, let's think about this for a moment. Why? Um, why do pollinators carry pollen for plants? Uh, you know, uh, what's in it for them? You know, I, I guess I want you to pause the video. I want you to take a minute and I really want you to stop and think, why do pollinators carry pollen for plants? Once you have your answer, go ahead and hit play again. So, Plants actually are using insects, are using these pollinators. And so they actually end up attracting uh, insects to them by flowers. That's the entire purpose of a flower. Uh, the, the things that you think of inside of a flower, the things like the petals um, and those bright colors, those are used to attract pollinators. So the plants are being a little sneaky about it. Pollinators are really attracted to these flowers well, A, because flowers have bright colors. So, you know, many of the insects look for these bright colors. And so that helps them find the flowers and the sweet smells. So, you know, they give off these chemical sim uh, uh, signals that, uh, you know, really draw these pollinators in. But why? Why do pollinators visit? Well, quite frankly, guys, the pollinators are not there to be nice. They're not there to help the plant. Uh, pollinators visit these flowers, they visit these plants to get food. So the plants actually, their strategy is to make food to give to the pollinators. The plants don't use the food. It is food just for pollinators. And that helps, the, uh, that helps to draw the pollinators in, that attracts them in. Now, of course, uh, pollinators, the food that they make, they uh, <clears throat> will use something called nectar. That's a word some of you have seen. And also the pollen itself. Um, nectar, and we know what pollen is, they're the tiny grains, but nectar is a sweet, sugary liquid. 
that we often find deep down off in a flower. So it's like sugar water. It's the same thing if you've ever put out a hummingbird feeder. Some of you may know that uh, you just simply take and uh, combine sugar and water, and that's what draws the hummingbirds in. And so that's often called uh, you know, hummingbird nectar. But so plants produce this all on their own, and they often hide it inside of flowers. So the thing that you need to know is, you know, the pollinators are there. They are there for the food. Pollination is quite accidental. They are not helping the plants. So plants produce this food. Uh, the, this gets the pollinators, the insects, to show up. Uh, you know, they are not they are not in it for anything but themselves. But while these pollinators pollinators are visiting the flowers, um, bees. Some of you have noticed that they are quite hairy. They have lots of little hairs on them. Uh, you know, they have to they have to sort of push around inside of the flower to get to the nectar, uh, to get to the things that the food sources that are there. And so they end up getting pollen uh, stuck on them. And so if you've ever seen a bee that has like little grains of pollen on it, then that's exactly what the plant intended. So the plant produces this food that it's not going to use itself simply to attract these pollinators. Now, when the insect, the pollinator visits, it gets these pollen grains stuck to it. Then when it moves on to another flower, because if you've ever watched a bee uh, doing bee things, you know, pollinators usually move from flower to flower to flower, gathering nectar and gathering pollen. But as, they, as they're moving from flower to flower, some of that pollen is falling off. And so they just act like little UPS drivers. They just kind of are like this delivery service where um, they deliver the pollen for the plants. It is really quite clever of the plants. It is a great adaptation. Uh, so angiosperms, flowering plants, they don't have to blanket everything in their environment like those gymnosperms do. They can produce a lot, they can produce a lot less pollen uh, and larger grains of pollen. And they have like, they have pollinators who do the, uh, the work for them. They, the pollinators actually move this pollen and they deliver it directly to other flowers. Uh, so that, poll that pollen often goes directly where it needs to be. So while, while this is neat and everything, uh, why, why do you care? Why are pollinators important? And that is the cutest bee of all time. Um, pollinators do provide us humans and every other living thing a valuable service. Well, first off, without pollinators, many plants would not be able to reproduce. Remember, flowering plants make up most plants. Most plants use flowers for reproduction. So that means they rely on these pollinators to come in and carry the pollen around for them. Um, why this matters most, I think, to us is because many of the plants that we grow as crops, meaning that we grow for food, require pollination by pollinators. And when you look at the list, it's really incredible. So things that we would often see in the grocery store, things like watermelon and squash and pears and apples and peaches and corn and cucumbers and tomatoes, the list goes on and on, everything down to rice and beans. Many of the foods that we eat simply could not exist if these insects did not visit the flowers and carry the pollen from flower to flower to flower. In some ways, pollinators are really at the base of the food chain. Um, all the food uh, that many, many other animals rely on um, would not be, would not exist. It wouldn't be produced uh, without these pollinators. So why are pollinators important? Because we like to eat. Because many of the crops that we rely on for food, they, they require pollen to be moved from plant to plant. And pollinators do that job for us and they do it free. So the next time you are, are outside and a bee buzzes by, instead of screaming and slapping at it, maybe you should just let it go about its job of helping you. All right, so uh, I do have some notes for you to put in your notebook today. In just a moment, I'll want you to pause the video. I want you to copy these notes exactly into your science notebook. Uh, if it's underlined, I want you to underline it. And uh, you know you can skip a line between if you would like, but you will definitely want um, this information for your next quiz. Please copy this down exactly as I have it here. Go ahead and pause the video. Uh, when you have got all your notes in, then go ahead and restart your video. All right. So don't forget, you still have a quiz that you should be working on if you did not finish it already. But 
uh, I do want to uh, I want to send you out with another lab uh, and specifically today I would like for you to step outside and I would like for you to go watch some pollinators so if you have some flowers around your home um, I want you to I want you to go outside remember we we can't go to those gymnosperms uh, because those are comb bearing and they don't use pollinators there's no food uh, at a gymnosperm there's no nectar there for the pollinators to gather really so I want you to go outside and I want you to spot a pollinator on a flower and I want you to watch how they're behaving I want you to watch what see what they're doing um, you know don't get so close that you end up uh, scaring it or making it angry at you because many pollinators well they they can fight back right they have uh, they have stingers on them but uh, watch its behavior closely see if you can see it actually gathering pollen uh, see if you can uh, see it drinking the nectar some honeybees have what's called pollen sacs so you may even notice on their hind legs like what looks like a bag or a sack full of pollen that they've been collecting it'll often be yellow in color so you can take a look for that anyhow um, you know go outside take a look around uh, do a pollinator watch and come back in put some observations in your notebook include some sketches if you'd like and that'll be your lab for today i think that about does it guys so until next time stay curious